Leisure Line Stove Company presents the Leisure Line Stoves video information series. Created to provide our valued customers with expert advice, techniques, and information on the care and maintenance of their Leisure Line stoves, furnaces, and boilers. What we have here are our basement models. One is the Pocono, the other is the High Fire. I'm not going to go through the, the thorough assembly as I did with the other stoves. They assemble up the same way with the blowers on the bottom, the uh, feeder installed in the hopper. I am going to show you a few different things with this. That's with others. But uh, with our high fire here, we have two before tubes that actually run right through the firebox here, uh, a heat exchanger. This high fire you can purchase with a hot air jacket. The hot air jacket, you can tie it right in to your existing hot air system going into the cold air return using the uh, cold troll thermostat to control the fans that uh, blow the heat throughout the house. Uh, what we offer, which comes with each and every high fire, are these little snap-in plates that actually fit inside. You have to bend, the, bend them accordingly. Fit inside these tubes that shut off the air from being blown out into the room. If you have this in the basement and you tie it into your existing hot air system, uh, the only radiant heat you actually get is from the front of the stove. So if you'd want a little more heat in the basement, you can just pop one of these out and let some hot air come out through there, or pop them both out and let a little more hot air come out through there, or leave them in. It's entirely up to you. It's, and also, it's, uh, it's what your, uh, your need is as far as heat. Also, with the high fire, Excuse me, the top itself is not welded onto the stove. The top is a heavy 10 gauge top. This comes separate, boxed up separately. Uh, if you use the high fire just as your standard unit, where it's just a freestanding unit, then naturally the top sets on top of the stove. If you tie it into your hot air duct system, the top comes off. You put your uh, jacket around the stove, which sucks the heat off the stove through your cold air return and throughout the, the house with your existing fan and filter system. When, uh, when you assemble the, uh, the basement models, the Pocono and the High Fire, on the back of each model to hold the hopper on, we have uh, this piece of angle iron. What we found, because the hopper is so big and it holds uh, over 200 pounds of coal, that without the support of angle in the hopper itself, the hopper wants to bolt when it's completely full. When the hopper is mounted on, it's the angle iron, a washer, and a nut. This supports the back of the hopper itself, being the hopper is made out of galvanil, and it gives the whole entire unit more rigidity. So with our basement models, Without actually assembling the whole model, the way they go together is just like our Pioneers or our Hearth or, or uh, Econo. You have two fans on the bottom. Each of them are 265 CFMs that mount with the four bolts blowing straight up. Then after they're installed, the dual feeder system or the single feeder system in the Pocono gets bolted in the same as the others. The uh, gaskets go onto the feeders. The hopper sets onto the feeder. The angle iron goes inside the hopper. Washers, nuts, draws it up. Assembly is accomplished. Everything is done. All right, on the high fire itself, uh, we, we sell an optional hot air jacket, which is uh, really pretty easy to assemble. And uh, I'll give you a quick uh, going over on, on how to assemble it. They're marked uh, right side, uh, left side, front, and back. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to have two people. Definitely make life a lot easier. Since, uh, uh, since I'm doing this by myself here, I'll just use bar clamps, which uh, you can do. The side, I always put the right side on first. The right side of the jacket needs to come flush here with the front of our tube. 
If you keep it within reason of being flush, give or take a quarter of an inch, reason of being flush, and also five inches above the body, not above the top, but above the body of the stump. That's where you want to put one screw in. They're self-tapping, uh, uh, self-drilling, self-tapping, half inch to one inch screws. We use all different sizes. Go in the holes. I would put one in the front here and leave the clamp on, then going to the left side, doing the same thing. What I've done here is I've placed the left hand side on the stove using a bar clamp. I've kept the same dimensions, five inches up from the outer body of the stove. And the dimension from width to width is just under 33 inches. Again, we've kept it almost flush with our holes here. You can use that as a lead point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill in and put a self tapper in there. Now we're going to uh, put the front plate on. The front plate and the rear plate are identical. It doesn't matter where you put them. We just mark them front and rear, but they're identical plates. Uh, what they do is they'll go on the front here. Again, you use the self-drilling screws. Uh, drill and tap into here. Come over to your other side. Make your adjustments. Drill and tap into there. All right, now our front plate. We're going to fasten our front plate onto the stove. As you notice, I'm only putting in one screw, and I'll only put in one screw on each side here until we get the back section on, then get everything squared up, then we'll screw everything fast. But right now, we'll just use the same screws that uh, we provide with the jacket. As you can see, working alone, I use vice grips. The front plate goes up and matches up with the, uh, the two sides, left and right. I'm on the back of the stove right now, mounting the, uh, the back of the plate also. What we'll do here is just, again, match it up with our side jacket. Working alone, we'll just use the vice grip. Keep this even on the edge, even on the top. Clamp it fast. Put one screw into each side. Now, we mount it up our rear plate onto the width of our stove to keep the 33 inch dimension. What I did is I used the self tapper. I drilled in with the, the holes uh, that's provided with our back plate. To keep the five inch measurement from the back. These are slotted. You can uh, move them up and down three eighths of an inch so they're, you don't have to be right on, uh, right on uh, money. And now this unit is uh, pretty well ready to uh, have all the final uh, self tappers put in it. All right, now that we have the jacket all on, uh, not as a finished product, but just just uh, our screws in holding it in, this is our top. We have to make sure our top fits onto the jacket. So uh, with everything in place as it should be, this top should fit right on there. We'll push it on from the back. And bring it to the front and it falls in place like it's supposed to. Now what we'll do here to finish up, we'll square up our sides so they're not drawn in or drawn out too far. We'll just square them up each side. We'll put one screw on the bottom and then just come right up the edge. Uh, what I usually do is uh, I fasten our outer top on after everything is secured. I fasten our outer top on with one screw here and one screw in the back, or if you like, one screw on each side. Now with our, 
uh, hot air jacket all assembled. I have all the uh, self tappers in it. It's really not a, a major project. Uh, by myself, this probably has taken me about uh, 15 minutes of working time. Uh, I just ran a, a self tapper in the front and back to locate the uh, top onto the stove. This top is a 14 inch ring. If you hook it into your hot air system, or whether it stands alone using a 14 inch duct fan, how it works is the, the heat is, or the air is being sucked up from the bottom of the stove, from the floor, up through the sides, preheated as it comes up the side of the stove, both sides, all drawn up across the sides and vented through this 14 inch ring. Now there's a couple different ways of doing this and also can provide a 14 inch duct fan which will produce about uh, between 12 and 1400 CFMs of uh, free flowing air that can be mounted uh, on a 14 inch duct. We do not recommend that you mount it on the top of this this uh, duct work here because the, of the intense heat it'll uh, cook the motor from this duct fan. We recommend that it be 30 inches away from the stove itself. So if you just want to uh, put this in your basement and you want to blow the air throughout your basement or, uh, or a shed or a building or wherever the case may be you come off here with a, a piece of 12 inch uh, 12 inch high 14 inch round pipe put your elbow on it, extend it out a section or two, then put your duct fan in it. What your duct fan will do, it'll suck the heat off the stove, pull it through the pipe and blow it throughout your, your, uh, your room or you can tie that into a, a Y and go to floor registers. There's just a number of ways you can do it. This 14 inch duct fan is also wired on a, on a fan limit switch which is just a little snap disc. This is mounted into a hole and behind this, this hole here we have a, a one inch hole where this is mounted. This measures the air temperature. It goes from 90 to 130 degrees and you can adjust this to whatever setting you like. It's a, a 20 degree switch. As the air temperature comes on it tells the fan to kick on, the fan draws the air off the stove until it cools down to a certain temperature, then shuts the fan back off. With our coal burning stoves, along with anybody else's coal burning stoves, coal produces CO. We recommend and give one CO detector with every stove. I personally recommend that you have a CO detector on every floor to find your closest dealer of American-made Leisure Line stoves, furnaces, and boilers, or view additional videos, visit www.leisurelinestoves.com.